welcome to Ask Wayne, everyone, on a Wednesday morning. By the time you guys hear this, it would be um, a week from yesterday, week from Tuesday, because all, actually, a week from Wednesday, because all my episodes come out on Wednesday morning, hump day, so you guys can get a little inspiration on hump day. But enough of my programming announcement. I'm going to let Mr. Greg Jameson take it away. Well, thank you. My understanding that we what we want to talk about today is about how to market your books and oh had, yes we do <laughs> oh yes we do i've had some experience with this having put out uh half a dozen books myself and one of the things that anybody that decides to write a book needs to understand right up front is that when you get a book published whether you use a traditional publisher, a hybrid publisher, or publish it yourself, that the author is the one who is actually responsible for marketing the book and making sure that it gets sold. So you can't just go get a publisher and think that the work is done as soon as you have written the book. In fact, that's when the work is just beginning. Yep. When I um, wrote my book, Greg, Seven years ago now, um, I I mistakenly forgot that I would be taking on another full-time job promoting this book because promoting my books now, books as in many books, books as in about ten books, but that's what um, people forget is they write a book, they write, they um, say I want to write a book, they do all that stuff, and then they forget the book has to be sold in order to make money. And I'm trying to get my next book agents, um, agents in front of a traditional publisher. And um, what people keep telling me, when is it the same thing in um, self publishing as it's in traditional publishing because um yeah, because these traditional publishers don't have time to market the books. I mean they may have time but they don't have as much time as you would think they do. Yeah, they certainly don't put the resources into marketing people's books. If, now, there may be some companies that will do book marketing for you, but uh, clearly a publisher's job is to simply publish the book, not to market the book, yeah. which means yeah. that it, it may be the best solution for most people to self-publish because then they can go ahead and market the book themselves anyway. So when we talk about pub or talk about marketing a book, uh, the, the real advantage of a book that many people don't necessarily recognize up front is that you don't make a lot of money by selling books. The the average author actually sells fewer than 100 books. But what you do get is you get established as an expert in whatever topic it is that your book is about and you can make a good income you can make an entire career out of having books even if the book itself is not the thing that's driving a lot of revenue for you yeah yes so you know the, the big question becomes really how do we actually make a book become an Amazon bestseller or or beyond, you know, a New York Times or USA Today bestseller. And what I have discovered is that the best way to do this is to actually get everybody else to do it for you. Basically, what you want to do is create some type of buzz where people are sharing your book, 
they're posting about it on all of their social media sites. They're posting about it on their emails and their newsletters and however else they're doing this so that you can basically get uh, a lot of publicity because all these other people are promoting it for you. And then, of course, the question then becomes, well, how the heck do you do that? (laughs) And one of the things that I know that I did with um, my last two books is first I started off by getting people to write testimonials for the book ahead of time. I would give them the manuscript before it was published and say, hey, would you write a cover blurb for this? And got, you know, a dozen or so people to write nice things about the book uh, before it was published, and then you put those quotes into the front of the book um, before it starts. Most people, this is the thing that is really encouraging, I think, for a lot of authors is is that most people will do that for you simply by you asking them. Uh, Not everyone will because people are busy and they may find that what you're saying is not a fit for their brand identity, but most people, if you simply say, hey, I'm writing this book, uh, can I send you the manuscript and would you write a cover blurb for it? Because of the fact that they are trying to promote their own brand and their own image, they will probably do that for you, (laughs) which means that you can get some people in there writing nice things for you that might not otherwise give you the time of day, but because they want to promote themselves and you're going to put their name and their tagline in your book, they'll be like, sure, I'd be happy to do that for you. So they're getting something out of it as well. Now you've got people in there that are basically promoting your book, and you can use those quotes in your own promotions as well. So you can put out a post on social media that says that, you know, so-and-so famous person actually said this about my book. and. That, that's kind of a, a third-party endorsement. The other thing that you can do is then, after the book is actually written, is do something similar where you are utilizing a website that uh, – I'm trying to think of the, the, the name of it right now – but you, you can use a website that will – It's called Thunderclap, that's it. Thunderclap that will actually allow you to get a whole bunch of people to promote your book for you uh, all at one time across social media. So you can go grab all of your family, all of your friends, all of your colleagues, all of your customers, anybody that you know and say, hey, uh, would you promote my book uh, on this Thunderclap campaign? And all you have to do is allow Facebook or Twitter to put this blurb out on this date and this time. And again, most people will do that if you simply ask them. People tend to be nice and enjoy helping other people out. People tend to be nice. I love it. Um, Now, I have a question for you. How do you feel about Amazon reviews? Because I know there's a huge controversy. Uh, Let's just say, let's be honest here, people, fake reviews. Let's just say um, there's a huge controversy of fake reviews. And even on my book on Amazon, I still have trouble getting reviews for my books. I mean, I have about, I don't know, 40 to 50 reviews of my original book, I comma win, and I comma W-I-N, for those of you who want to go look it up on Amazon, by the way. Um, and I have a couple of reviews on my compilations, which I did with other authors, and I have a couple of reviews on my own book, as I said. But how do you get more reviews 
via Amazon. Is there a trick? Oh, is there a trick that I'm missing or that we're all missing? Or oh, what's the deal? There used to be a trick, actually, which is what caused a lot of those fake reviews, and Amazon actually cracked down on that about two years ago. So I... I think the number of fake reviews is significantly less, uh, but reviews are incredibly important. And part of what happens is, is that when Amazon puts any new product out there, whether it be a, a book or some other widget, they look at a couple of different factors in terms of where it's going to be promoted on their pages. One is the initial response of how many books are being sold. So if the book comes out and immediately it sells 100 copies, they're going to push that to the top of their pages. The other thing that it looks at is the number of reviews. And... The big thing that you want to do, it seems like the magic number is somewhere around 15 to 20, is get yeah. 15 to 20 reviews shortly after the book has been released and put up on Amazon. Yeah. And again, the way that I have found is the best thing to do is to simply send a copy of your book to people that are willing to commit to writing a review. And let them uh, put the review out there. Amazon actually, books are the only category that Amazon allows you to do this for anymore where someone can write a review even though they haven't purchased the book uh, through Amazon. So you can now go and you, you can still write reviews, especially when it's first coming out, that they're not a verified purchase review, but you can get those people to write reviews for you. And like I said, if you can get 15 of them or so immediately, that is a big help. Now, once the book has been out there for a couple of months, then what you're going to want to do is really get verified purchase reviews, which means somebody has actually purchased the book and it shows up as a, a different type of review. It says that it's a verified purchase. Yeah. What I have found works yeah. really well for doing this is to tell people you're having a live event, you're at a networking event, you're doing a presentation, you're at a meeting, whatever, and you tell people that, hey, I've got my book here, and if you will take out your cell phone right now and go purchase the ebook version of this, I have put it on sale for 99 cents for the next hour or whatever time limit you have, the next 24 hours. Go purchase the book, show me the receipt on your cell phone and that you have purchased the book, and I'm going to give you the physical copy of the book right here at this meeting. Now you've got somebody that has gone out there. They are a verified purchase, even though you dropped the price and it's the ebook version. They are a verified purchaser of your book. You can still sign the paper copy of it, hand it to them. So they've got that. They've got a nice signed book. But they're a verified purchaser. They go out and write a review for you, and you get a verified purchase review. And that way you can build up the reviews quickly that way as well. Yeah. Well, that's, um, that's one way to do it. I could, I could hand the book by my fan base all the time. I could... It's just one of the reasons people like handing me books. I have a stack from my fan base. I'm not kidding, Greg, when I say this. I have a stack from my fan base, which now I need to read and leave reviews. Thank you very much. Because people keep handing me books, and I need to read them and leave reviews. Now, my next question is, okay, we talked about Amazon. Is there a trick to getting reviews on ebooks on 
all the other platforms, let's say um, Apple, let's say Apple iBooks, for example, do um, do we make the book commercially or do we make the book lower the price or how do we get reviews? Because I know that the more reviews we get, the more eyeballs it will get on the book. Yeah, and it's really kind of tricky when you think about reviews of anything, uh, whether it be a book or some other widget, is that the people that tend to leave reviews are either people that are really excited about their purchase, they really enjoyed the material in the book, or they thought it sucked. Uh, There's very few people that are in between. It's like, well, that was a pretty good read, but... Uh, you know, and it, it was worth the money, but I probably wouldn't buy it again type thing. The, 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 in a one- to five-star review system, you hardly ever see a three-star review. People are yeah. either given it a four- or five-star or a one- or two-star. And quite honestly, the people that leave a four-star review are like, you know, I, I actually did like the book, but uh, he's got so many... Uh, five star reviews that I'm just going to give them a four star type thing, and kind of the the same thing with the people that really thought that it was bad. They're like, eh, I I'm a nice person. I really don't feel like giving them a one star, so they give them a two star. Which means that everybody is at one extreme or the other when they leave a review. They they're like, I really like it, or the thing sucked, and. Getting uh, people to uh, just kind of organically say, yeah, I I really liked this well enough that I'm going to take my time to write a review for somebody that I don't know and and, and say nice things about it, that's a tough thing. Uh, So really the best thing you can do, even though it might... Uh, get the feeling of a fake review is to simply ask people for a review. You, you might ask them for the review right in the book itself, towards the end of the book. You know, if you enjoyed this book, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a nice review for me. Uh, you might do that by sending out emails and social media posts and so forth about your book, saying, hey, if you enjoyed my book, I'd really appreciate a uh, nice review on Amazon or Apple or Google or whoever else it might be, Barnes & Noble. Yeah. Yeah. But but basically, you have to ask. If, if you don't ask, you don't get. Okay. Okay. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I just realized I have to ask all my fan base again to leave a review on all my books, including my anthologies, because that helps the um, anthologies figure out what people like about my book from my from my book. But, <coughs> Greg, what's the... How can we not sound so filthy and slimy <laughs> and... How can we we be nice about it? How I mean, you don't want to shove. At least I don't, but I will if I have to. You don't want to shove a book in people's face and say, "Please leave a review and be mean about it." But how can we be? Because I've had people do that to me, and I. I turn around and say, no, thank you. But, I, yeah, one person in particular. But um, how could we be nice about it but not too nice? I, I totally hear what you're saying, and I agree with you, which is why, you know, my most recent book is called The Influencer Effect, and it's about getting other people to influence the purchasing habits of other people. So you're getting a third-party endorsement, basically. And one of the things that I did in the promotion of that book 
is I had people take a picture of themselves with the book and post it on social media saying, hey, I've got this book and I really like it, you know, go, go support my friend Greg Jameson. And they would be promoting it to their followers, which is really helpful because, like I said, it's kind of a third-party endorsement at that point. You know, somebody else is saying, hey, I like this book, go check it out, which is the, the probably the best way to sell almost anything is to have somebody else say, you know, whether you're looking for a new restaurant or a movie to go to or whatever, if you're... Uh, family and friends say this is a good thing they're, they're probably going to go take a look at it the, so the big question then really becomes how do you incentivize somebody to do that and quite honestly I never paid for an endorsement for anybody to do that in my books everybody did it be, simply because I asked and there were people that were doing it that I did not know that well that were actually fairly big names in the internet marketing industry that agreed to do that for me. Uh, I did know them. I had gone to conferences with them. But it's not like they were somebody that I hung out with on a regular basis. They did it in part because it helps promote their themselves and their brand identity and in part because... I simply asked, and that is, I think, really the key is you, you need to ask people specifically, hey, would you post a picture of yourself with my book and tell people why it is that they should like it and where they can go get it? And the great thing is is that once they do that, then you've got a picture of them holding your book and saying nice things about you that you can then use to and promote it elsewhere. So it's, it's really a big uh, cycle that you can use and just get more and more people to to start promoting it. I have seen other authors that do a similar type of thing, and they actually hold a contest where they will say, hey, I, in fact, I've seen other authors do two things. One, that they will say, I'm going to give you my book for free. All you have to do is pay for the cost of shipping and handling. And then they make the cost of the shipping and handling be such that they're really covering the cost of the printing as well. So it, it may be that it's a break-even proposition for the author because, you know, they're Somebody's paying seven dollars and ninety-five cents, which covers the cost of the printing and the cost of the shipping, and they get the book. Uh, and then they will run a contest as well, saying, "Hey, for everybody that promotes this by showing a picture of themselves with the book uh, on their social media, then I'm going to have a drawing for." X, whatever X might be, you know, an iPad or something just to try to really get yeah. people to, to do it. Like I said, I, I, I have not run those kind of contests myself or the the free uh, plus shipping and handling. Yeah. But I know other authors have. But you have, that. What, you have done the... Um, hold your picture in your natural environment. And so they're um, they're promoting your book in on a book shelf or uh, they're just holding it. Primarily them holding it, you guys are not on a book shelf because we can't sit. Uh, so um that's a great idea for those authors who are struggling to get reviews because, oh, God, it takes a village to raise a book. It takes a village to raise an author, and God knows I've been at this for seven years, and I still haven't quite figured it out. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, but do you feel like there's any more tips we need to know about other than the Amazon reviews and other than uh, natural um, natural photos of the book out in the wild, as 
Joanna Penn says. I think that the the single biggest thing about getting a book sold, really getting anything sold, and why Amazon has been so successful with their business model is they're basically getting complete strangers to purchase products because of the fact that some other stranger left a review. People tend to listen to what other people have to say about something. If people have heard that a restaurant is bad, they probably won't go there. If they've heard that it's good, they probably will. Now, regardless of the fact that the person that's recommending that restaurant, that they don't know them at all. And the same thing is true with books, is that if a complete stranger is recommending your book, then people will be like, oh, you know, somebody else liked it, therefore I probably will like it too. And so getting those reviews, getting those endorsements, getting people to spread the word for you across social media, really utilizing their influence to sell your book is the key for any author to get their book to be number one is by getting lots of other people to promote it for them. And I know authors that um, I actually interviewed author the other day, actually two authors that are coming out with a book um, which I which I am calling the Yellow Pages of Publishing. And that episode will be out today as we record this one. So those of you who listen to Greg Namon can go back and listen to Elba and Haley talk about the Yellow Pages of Self-Publishing. And they have their book on pre-order. Does pre-orders actually help in sales and leaving reviews blank, or is pre-order a bunch of false talking? I, I, I'm sorry, I, di- I didn't catch what you were asking me there. Does pre-order of the book help with um, reviews and sales? Well, pre- pre-orders, yes, it absolutely does. Uh, yeah. Because, again, what happens is is that the day the book is released, Amazon looks at how many books have been sold, and all of those pre-order ones basically count towards the day of the sale. So if you've had 100 people pre-order the book, then it looks like, okay, the, the book is released today and 100 people have already bought it. So, it, yeah, pre, pre-orders are great, and anybody that does pre-order the book, if you can actually send them an electronic version of the book so that they have a chance to read it beforehand so that they can then go in and write their reviews on Amazon the day that it is released, then, again, it's kind of this big splash mentality of 100 of these things have already been sold, 10 people have already left reviews for it. So that that is a very good thing to do. So when you put a buck on play on it, you can't um, – necessarily ask for the reviews um, from the people who pre-order it. You have to send them the manuscript to get them to review it, and then they write a review on the day it's released. Yeah, they can actually write the reviews before it's released. If, if they've got a copy of it and it's on the Amazon site as pre-release, they can still write the reviews. The the reviews may not, I'm not positive, they may not show up until the book is actually done, but I know that they can go ahead and leave the reviews on the pre-orders. Well, isn't that that interesting that I can leave a review on pre-orders? I um, actually have decided, you guys, to team up <laughs> with Gladiator Publishing, Elbert and Haley, 
for um, after I try and get my latest book in front of the agent, which is turning out to be hell, basically, because um, these agents are so picky. As I as I said, these agents want these query letters absolutely perfect, and my query letter isn't perfect yet, but it will be. Yes is the operative word, but it will be. And so I've actually decided to, for my next um, two books, not for the View from All Fabric, but um, for my next two books, The Lipstick Coffee Shop, and a book about marijuana, believe it or not, um, coming out of me. <laughs> and so I have decided to team up with those guys because those guys spoke so highly of the yellow pages of self-publishing. And they said to me yesterday, do, do pre-orders, do everything you can to promote the books now. And that's going to be my final question for Greg. And then I'm going to let him ask me a couple questions. And then I'm going to let him say where people can find him. And then, Greg, do you think pre-promotion of the book helps before you even, while the book is in the editing stages, or no? Yeah, it's... It's actually a good idea to be promoting your book, I think, even as soon as you start writing it. I know some people take a long time to write their books. They may take a year to write a book. And it's okay to say, I am the author of the upcoming book, uh, whatever the, the title of your book is. Yeah. And, and let people know so that you can kind of build a little bit of excitement for it. If you go too far out, I think people might think, you know, that, hey, it's not really happening type thing. Yeah. But a traditional publisher will frequently take uh, almost a year sometimes to get your book out on the market. And so you've written the book, and, you know, nine months goes by before it's actually on the shelves, and you definitely want to be promoting it uh, during that time. And if you're self-publishing, you can get the book out much quicker, but, it, you know, during the time that you are actually going through the process of creating the cover and... Uh, working with the editor and so forth, absolutely start promoting the book early, early and often. Yeah, well, that's what I've learned now is to promote these books early and often. And, Greg, do you have any questions for me about anything that you want to ask me? Well, before I do that, I actually was thinking of one other thing that people need to do with their books, uh, which goes along the same lines as asking people for reviews and stuff, and that is, is that there are lots and lots of books put out every year. Almost everybody seems like has a book anymore. And the way that you can really stand out is to do these promotions yourself, including going to the bookstores and say, bringing them a copy of your book saying, here's my book, would you carry it for me? I have done that at multiple bookstores, and they usually say yes simply because I walked in with the book. They are not going to go to Ingram, who's the major book distributor, and just order a book randomly without knowing anything about it. But if you go into a bookstore with a copy of your book, hand it to the book purchaser, they will probably carry it. The same thing is true with your local libraries. Bring a copy of your book in. They will buy the books. Your libraries will buy the books. The bookstores will buy the books. But you have to let them know that, hey, I'm a real person, I've got this book, and here it is. But so I get, 
that leads me to another question that I forgot to ask. Okay. I um, had a fight with my local independent bookstore, which um, is still here. I can't believe we still have it. That's another long story in itself. Um, but I had a fight with my local independent bookstore, and I'm throwing them under the bus right now, because my book was published on Amazon, and according to them, you can't return a self-published book if the book doesn't sell. So I um, had this fight with the independent bookstore, and they said, no, absolutely not. We won't carry your book because... Uh, you self-published it on Amazon, and that's what the small bookstore in Aspen, Colorado, said to me. Now, granted, this was seven years ago, but I think that most independent public um, bookstores will not carry books that are self-published because of that reason. So is there any way, Greg, that you know of that we can conquer this battle with independent bookstores? Yeah, what you're saying is absolutely the case if you are utilizing uh – if you go through Amazon's create space to self-publish a book, Amazon will provide you with what's called an ISBN number yeah. that is an Amazon-supplied number. And so you're using an Amazon-supplied number and self-publishing it, and the independent bookstores will look at that and say, that's our competition, we're not going to carry it. That that, yeah. that is still true. So what you have to do is you actually have to go through a service, it's called Boker, B-O-W-K-E-R, and purchase your own ISBN numbers. Uh, they sell them in blocks of 10, and you actually need a different ISBN number for each version of your book. So the paperback version will have a different ISBN number than the hardcover version, which would have a different ISBN number than an audiobook version and so on. Yeah, You're probably going to need like three of them up front anyway. So, so you buy a, you buy your own ISBN numbers, and then you put in your book that this was published by Greg Jameson with this ISBN number, and then the independent bookstores can order your books through Ingram. Uh, you, you actually sign up for an account at Ingram Spark. And then they can buy them through Ingram rather than buying them through Amazon, and they will do that. Yeah, they will. They will do that. You just can't fight the bookstores on Amazon, you guys. Yeah, they won't do that. I did it with my um, last book, book review for my fabulous teaching desk, and it seems, and it's still up on Ingram, you guys. If you guys want to go check that out. Um, and it seems and, and the great thing better. is, is one, once you have your book, as we kind of mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, is that you can then take your book into an association, to an organization or whatever, hand them your, your book and say, I would like to give a presentation to your organization. Here's my book. And because you are a published author, you get more speaking opportunities and therefore you get the opportunity to really expand your brand and to uh, sell your products and services. Yes, yes. But um, these independent libraries are picky. So do not publish, um, well, publish on Create Space, but buy your own ISBN through Belka.com. And you guys can Google Belka.com. I believe it's 20 bucks for a pack of 10. The um, last time I checked, it was 20 bucks for a pack of 10. And so that's what my publisher, Gladiator Publishing, is going to do because um, we're – 
we talked about this yesterday, and we're just waiting for Amazon to go bye-bye because they um, pulled all the um, self-publishing services from Create Space, and we're now it's now it's interesting what Create Space is doing. They pulled it about a year ago now in 2017, and so you have to be really careful as to say, okay, I can publish this book on Amazon, but if I want it in bookstores, the bookstores are not going to like you if you use an Amazon ISBN number, which is a personal identification number for that exact book. So Greg is right. Use Belka, you guys, and I wish I knew that way back when. I know that now, but um, I don't, I didn't know that way back when, when I published I Tom a Win, maybe someone can help me fix <laughs> it, because I w- would really like my book in, um, in this independent bookstore, but at the same time, I'm like, I can see the independent bookstore's point of view, because if the book doesn't sell, they're up to the creek without a paddle. They're literally up to the creek without a paddle because they have about 10 copies of it, and they have to store the 10 copies, or you do. It's either you or them. So no wonder why they don't like Amazon self-publishing to um, with Amazon's ISBN. So thank you, Greg, for the additional commentary. But now, do you have any questions <laughs> for me? Uh, not really as it relates to uh, specifically what we've talked about today, but I guess my question is is that I think everybody uh, that listens to this podcast probably knows a little bit about your story. I've learned some things by listening to uh, yeah. other episodes. Have you been able to really leverage your story and your books, I guess, to make an impact it's, on, uh, it's on your funny. followers? It's funny you say that because people, people are not um, as fascinated as the um, – Say I'm the story as it was seven years ago when uh, my first book came out. People were enamored by the cerebral palsy story, but they're enamored that I hold a day job, and I actually do hold a day job, and um, I've been doing that for the past ten years. I um, got the day job, then wrote the book about. Um, my life, and so, and yeah, I still have a day job, believe it or not, and so, but they are more enamored, believe it or not, by my money story and how I'm so open about my money story um, and how I'm so open and transparent about my life with sample policy on this podcast and through my work. So, yes, it's funny that you mentioned it. Yes, my book and my work have made an impact on the community, and that's going to be my legacy. Cerebral palsy is going to be my legacy, and using my gifts and talents, despite my cerebral palsy, that's truly going to be my legacy, and I hope it lasts. Long after I leave the first, you guys, long after I leave the first, and I hope that um, my next couple books make huge splashes in a book, for, in a pond full of books that are self-published on Amazon, and the um, thing that Greg will tell you is editing is so important. We don't necessarily care about the cover design, but the editing we care about because the problem with Amazon is that you can self-publish anything 
on Amazon and say that I have a book. Yeah, you absolutely can. But yeah. I think that what what you're doing is you know, an an inspiration for a lot of people and I was actually on a uh, it, well, it was my own podcast the other day where I was talking with somebody about becoming an expert, a recognized expert, and she was saying that you have to utilize everything of who you are. So if you are someone who has cerebral palsy, that's a part of who you are, and you make it part of your story. You don't uh, you make it the, the whole story, but you make it a part of your story, and as a result of that, you let people know who you really are, your authentic self, and it just helps people say, that's a real person that I can relate to, and so yeah. kudos to you. <laughs> Well, thank you for saying that. No, I think the um, the more we're authentic, the better. And so, Greg, where can people find you, and how can people get a hold of you, either on book marketing or e-commerce marketing or anything else related to marketing? The now, best you guys, way. This was a fascinating chat, by the way, and book marketing. I learned a lot, and so I hope you guys did too, and where can people find you guys? Okay, thanks for asking. The be- the best way is to simply go to gregjameson.com. That's G-R-E-G-J-A-M-E-S-O-N. It's spelled just like the whiskey. Makes it easy for people to remember. Uh, when you go to gregjameson.com, you can actually purchase my books there as well as on Amazon. There's a page there that's simply called Connect that allows people to get to all of my social media sites, uh, to send me emails, sign up for a free coaching session, whatever you want to do. There's uh, all, all the information is there. All the information is there. And, of course, if you're walking the dog or driving while you're listening to us, I know a lot of people use me as an uh, entertainment during their commute. I've looked at my numbers, and a lot of numbers are coming out of San Francisco and the L.A. area. So I know you guys are using me as a softener to your commute. And so if you're doing that, using me as a softener to your commute, um, we'll have all of Greg's information in the show notes and including his website and then including his bio. And so you guys can contact Greg. As you can tell, Greg knows a lot about marketing and a lot about marketing books, and I hope this helped you um, in your book marketing journey, and even if you haven't started writing books, I think everyone should start writing a book, um, make that one of their life goals, whether you're in high school, college, or something to that effect. Take a month to say, I'm going to book and publish it on Amazon, and market the heck out of it and see where it goes. You guys are leaving a legacy just like I am. And so I hope this podcast helps you out, figure it out the marketing aspects. And I thank Greg for coming on and sharing a little bit about book marketing. Thanks, you guys. Bye. Thank you.